Hello, I'm Chris. Welcome back to D's Nerds, and today we're going to go over my guide for newbies to the Godzilla series. Alright, before we get started, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, as well as subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing here at D's Nerds, as well as ring that bell icon so you know when those videos are coming out. So, the way I'm approaching this is with the basic understanding that the Godzilla franchise is a very daunting franchise to get into. Um, there's been uh, 32 films just from Toho. That's not even counting you know, the Warner Brothers, the MonsterVerse, and the one uh, movie that came out in the late 90s uh, from TriStar. Uh, you know, that's that's just a lot of movies and a varying quality. So, you know, if you're someone who's kind of interested in getting into it, if you pick the wrong film, you may not become a Godzilla fan. So, um, so I'm speaking to that fan that wants to get into it and doesn't know where to start. You know, maybe you've watched some of those MonsterVerse films like, you know, Godzilla King of the Monsters or the 2014 film or even Kong Skull Island. And, um, you know, or you've heard about, you know, Godzilla vs. Kong that's coming out, I guess, now and... 2021 now uh you know with all the craziness that's going on so um but you want to dig deeper and you want to be where do i start so um i think that it helps first of all just to kind of have a basic understanding that with this time that with this franchise that there are several timelines that you need to look at and um, there are actually there are six so um we'll start with kind of a quick review of you know, what movies are where and in what timeline. And then we'll go over my basic uh, recommendations of six films that would really get you off to a good start. And by that point, if you've watched those six and you really like them, then, you know, you can dig deeper. And if you don't like those six, then you're probably not going to be a Godzilla fan anyway. Um, so let's kind of start off. Let's just start in chronological order. And let's take a look at the show era. Show era ran from 1954 with the very first Godzilla film and ran until 1975. Um, and it is all included actually right here in this behemoth of a box set. Um, you know, Godzilla, the show era films, 1954 to 1975. Uh, this is by Criterion and it's, I mean, it's huge. I mean, you know, like I have a, a, a just a standard Blu-ray case here. I mean, you can see size wise, I guess they figured, you know, Godzilla being the behemoth that he is, that they needed to just go whole hog. Um, there have been people that have complained about the size, you know, even myself, you know, my standard shelves for movies, it was kind of difficult to uh, find a spot for it, but I was able to find a spot for it. it has a lot of really cool artwork, um, in it with you know um, a lot of you know essays and stuff about each individual film um see like you can see some of the artwork there when it's talking about you know some of the, you know they talk about each individual film whenever they're doing this so i mean you kind of see how that works and then all the films are in the back on the on those discs so um you know it's a it's a great box set it is really large so you'll have to find a spot to store it but it has every single film on uh, on the show era so i highly recommend that if you really want to go whole hog into it um but the show era includes uh the original 1954 film directed by shiro honda who directed a ton of these movies um but that was the first one uh, it also includes the uh i'm also including the american cut the 1956 film uh godzilla King of the Monsters, not to be confused with the 2019 film that came out. Um, this was an American cut that featured uh, actor Raymond Burr. They inserted him into the storyline, um, and that came out in 1956. So that's all included on that as well. Um, but it also includes Godzilla Raids Again, which came out in 1955. It includes King Kong vs. Godzilla in 1963. Mothra vs. Godzilla in 1964. Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster in 1964, Invasion of Astro Monster in 1965, Ibera Horror of the Deep in 1966, Son of Godzilla in 1967, Destroy All Monsters in 1968, All Monsters Attack in 1969, Godzilla vs. Ghidorah in 1971, Godzilla vs. Gigan in 1972, Godzilla vs. Megalon in 1973, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla in 1974, 
and Terror of Mechagodzilla in 1975. Um, essentially, these are the ones I grew up with as a kid. These were the ones that were like on TNT or various other uh, channels, and this is where I truly fell in love with the Godzilla franchise. A lot of these are really good. You do kind of have to take into um, into account the the effects of the time. There were, there were just limitations there, so um, you know they there are some of the films the effects look really good. And some of them they don't look that great, but um, overall, I mean, there's some really, really, really good films in this in this series. Um, the second group is in the Heisei era. Uh, here they essentially rebooted, ex with the exception of the original 1954 film, and they just did a direct sequel to that, and then they just kept going and telling their own stories there. And so, um, actually, I think this is by far the most consistent era of Godzilla as far as from from the first film to the last film in this series it it is very consistent from movie to movie and you can watch each one and you're pretty much going to get the same amount of quality uh, but it starts with a direct sequel to the 1954 Godzilla film called The Return of Godzilla also called Godzilla 1984 again as with the 1954 film there's an American cut called Godzilla 1985 that one is not really available right now because apparently there are some huge rights issues with that that probably ensure that the chances of their getting an actual physical media release are slim and none. Uh, but it starts off with that one there. Um, you know, I have the individual one there. That's from Kraken releasing there. That's a, that's a really strong film. Godzilla is very terrifying. They kind of get him back more to that force of nature kind of situation. Um, and then it just moves on through, uh, you know, like in 1989, they do Godzilla versus Biollante. And then they do Godzilla versus King Ghidorah in 1991, followed up with Godzilla versus Mothra in 1992. And then in 1993, they do Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla 2. Now, they make that out like it's a direct sequel of some kind. They're basically saying that. It's the second Mechagodzilla film from 1974, even though there was another Mechagodzilla movie right after that in 1975. Title's kind of wonky, you know, it's just kind of the way it is. Um, but it's also followed up by Godzilla versus Space Godzilla in 1994. And uh, then it's followed up by Godzilla versus Destroya in 1995. So that was the, uh, that was the Hayes area. Again, it's my, f uh, probably my favorite era of Godzilla as far as just the consistency from film to film. Uh, the third, the third era I call it roughly, uh, is what we call the Columbia TriStar Pictures film from 1998. They made a lot of changes to Godzilla in that. I am not that big a fan of that one if I'm being completely honest. It does have its fans and it's very, very vocal fans in that and definitely want to respect their opinions on it. Um, but this one just isn't for me. You know, I'm very much a completist when it comes to collecting films, especially with physical media, and I don't even own it. So, I mean, that tells you how much I really wasn't a fan of it. So, you know, that's just my take on it. Um, but the fourth era is the Millennium series. And this one's really not that well connected. Uh, basically, they're each standalone, except for a couple of movies uh, that are tied together really closely. Um, but the, it's it's a very it's a consistent series. It's the quality's pretty good. Um, it's not comparable to me to the Hayes area at all. But it does have its strong points there. But it starts with Godzilla 2000 in 1999, um, and then going back to this um, when Sony put out these Blu-rays, they did the double feature. They put Destroya, and then the second film in this era, which was Godzilla versus Megagirus. I'm not sure why they did that, but they did. So that's the second film in that. And then the third one is by far the um, wordiest title I've ever come across. Um, I have to, I'm going to read here, Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. Try saying that three times fast, right? Um, that came out in 2001, uh, followed by Godzilla Against Mechagodzilla, which came out in 2002. Now, and then then came out Godzilla Tokyo SOS. This is actually a direct sequel 
to Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. So that's really the only one in the Millennium series that's closely tied to any other film in that series. Uh, and then, of course, Godzilla Final Wars, which was supposed to be the end of the Godzilla series at that point in time. However, Godzilla keeps coming back, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, now the fifth era is what they call the, the Reiwa era. Now, honestly, I haven't watched any of these movies. Uh, there's four films, and I haven't watched them yet, not because, you know, I have any issues with them or anything. just haven't gotten around to it. Um, definitely they're on my list to get to at some point, but it is Shin Godzilla, which I've heard really good things about. And, um, then there's three anime movies, uh, Godzilla Planet of the Monsters in 2017, Godzilla City of the Edge of Battle in 2018, and Godzilla the Planet Eater in, also in 2018. Again, I haven't watched those yet, so I really don't have a big opinion on that. But, uh, like I said, I've heard some good things really about that whole era, so they're definitely on my watch list. Um, and then, of course, the ones that most American audiences are really familiar with is the MonsterVerse films from Warner Brothers, uh, starting with, um, you know, Godzilla 2014, right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and include Kong Skull Island in this because they also make reference to, the, to Godzilla at the very end of this film. And plus, it is set in the MonsterVerse, and uh, I believe that that is worthy of being in this series. And then also, uh, of course, Godzilla King of the Monsters, which came out in 2019. And of course, in 2021 now, uh, it was just announced actually today, that I'm filming this today, uh, on, a, on June 12th, that uh, it was announced that uh, they're pushing back Godzilla vs. Kong from November to, I believe, I think sometime in the spring, March, April, which, you know, that's just, that's the way it is. So we'll just have to be patient, wait on that. Um, I feel like these films are pretty divisive, especially Godzilla King of the Monsters. It was really divisive when it came out. I believe that this is a great entry point into Godzilla, though. It's very accessible. You know, I always talk about barriers to entry. The barrier to entry on this is really low. And, um, you know, like I said, the effects look really great. You know, Godzilla looks awesome. I mean, all the monsters in this look really amazing. And I think the I think the storylines are really interesting as well. So I think you know if you if you've never watched a Godzilla movie, I would absolutely say you start off with those three films, and um, also Godzilla vs Kong when it comes out. Uh, I think they're very accessible and very easy to get into. I will say overall, especially with modern movie audiences, probably the rest of this series is a little harder to get into. But if you're at that point, you've watch some of the MonsterVerse, or even if you just want to dive in, you're like, look, I want to get into Godzilla. You know, what are your recommendations? Um, this is, um, these are my recommendations and what I would say uh, you would get into. Uh, the first, uh, really my recommendations are going to come from the Showa era, notwithstanding the, the MonsterVerse films. Um, the 1954 film is a must, is a must watch. Uh, his, you know, Ishiro Honda's gritty film really taught you know, it speaks to the horrors of the nuclear age I mean, you got to realize where that time was you know you're talking about 1954 you're talking about less than a decade after you know the bombs were dropped in japan and uh, you know this is and godzilla is you know symbolic of the bomb and it is a classic film it is gritty it is sad it, it's scary in certain parts it to me, Godzilla, right behind the original King Kong in 1933, is one of the most iconic monster movies from that, you know, black and white era, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s kind of thing. So, um, absolute must watch. Start there. It still really holds up really well. It moves a little slower like a lot of films in the 50s did, but completely there. It, it's totally worth it. Then I would move on to Mothra vs. Godzilla. Uh, it's a great story, introduces the um, the twins into it. Uh, it also introduces Mothra into the Godzilla universe. Now, Mothra had her own solo film before this, but you know, introduces that into it, and you know, Godzilla is just, he's, he's a bad mofo in this, basically. Um, then I would watch Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. Ghidorah, you know, is a three-headed golden dragon, basically, for lack of a better term. 
uh, that he's basically Godzilla's main rival or one of his main rivals. And uh, it's a great introduction to that character. Uh, also brings in Rodan. Rodan had had a solo film as well before this, but introduces Rodan into the Godzilla universe, the Showa era universe at that time, and also features Mothra in that as well. Um, at this point, a lot of people go to destroy all monsters, which is a great uh, Godzilla movie. It's the last 20 minutes, the last fight there at the end is awesome. It is a little bit slower film for me up until that point. So I'm not going to include that. What I'm going to tell you to go do is watch Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Mechagodzilla is by far my favorite antagonist of Godzilla. And I'm really excited to see in future movies in the MonsterVerse if they introduce Mechagodzilla. But in this film, you know, he is awesome. The fights in this are awesome. You know, it's, it's a little zany with some of the storyline. But it is very good. And what it really shows to me as well is that the Showa era was starting to get... I mean, this was the next to last Showa era film. And it was getting long in the tooth. But it shows even at that point they were still capable of cranking out a really memorable villain and a film there. So uh, those were the four from the Showa era I would really start with. Uh, then I would go to the Heisei era and I would go to the return of Godzilla from 1984. Uh it's going to work as a direct sequel to the 1954 film. You know, essentially, if you kind of don't want to deal with kind of the monster versus monster versus monster kind of fights, just going into this, you know, you can watch the 1954 film and watch Return of Godzilla in 1984, and you have two movies that are, that's a great storyline just right there, those two movies. Um, it brings Godzilla back to his roots as this just terrifying destructive force of nature and it's a very serious film um and it's really one of my favorites and there's like i said the hayes era is very consistent i really don't have a problem with any of those movies in that era and there's some that i neglected or not i kind of went back and forth on saying look you know who do i include this do i not you know there's the Mothra movie is really good. The King Ghidorah movie is really good. Uh, Godzilla vs. Biolante is a really good one as well. Um, but I decided, you know what, go right to Godzilla vs. Destroya. It's It brings back some elements from the 1954 film. I don't want to spoil it too much if you haven't seen it. But it brings back some elements from the 1954 film and it introduces it in a new, really far out and kind of weird way. But it introduces by far Destroya as one of the great opponents that he's faced off against. And um, it's an epic, epic conclusion to the Heisei era. And then, like I said, I wanted to keep it short. You know, six films to me, you know, once we start getting seven, eight, nine, ten films, it starts to be like, well, just watch the whole thing, right? Um, so we don't want to, I don't want to overwhelm you, you know. Basically, with this list here, if you watch this and you're still and you love these six movies, then go full bore into it because there's a lot more that's really good there. There are some really poor movies in here, too, I would say, especially in the Showa era, towards the middle of the Showa era. There's a few there that are kind of that kind of get a little weird, and uh, there's also a few, in my opinion, in the Millennium era that are a little weak which is okay. Um, like I said, they're, they're okay. They're, you know, they're just not ones I go to that often. And I guess I haven't seen anything from the Ray Wire either, but uh, if you get to these six films and, you, and you're loving it, keep going. Um, if you're not a fan by the end of these six films, you're probably not going to be a Godzilla fan, which, which is fine. Um, but you know, if you decide, Hey, we want to go whole hog, um, just kind of give you a little bit of a guide to what, um, where to buy them on physical media. I know they're available on various streaming platforms, and I think I saw where they're going to be on HBO Max. Uh, I think the Showa era films are going to be on HBO Max, which is really cool. Um, but, you know, again, I fully recommend, you know, hey, you know, if you're going to go big, just go big and get the get the Showa era box set there, you know, all 15 films right in one package there um, as well. Um, Kraken, 
um, did the Return of Godzilla on this. And I think it was Echo Bridge that came out with this, but it was a Miramax film, but Godzilla vs. Biolanti. Pretty sure that one's still available. Also, pretty confident that all of the rest of these films, you know, from the Heisei era and the Millennium era, are on um, on Sony in these these uh, double feature, what they call the Toho Godzilla collection. And then, of course, your MonsterVerse films are available, you know, on um, physical media pretty, pretty regularly there. Um, really hoping soon that, you know, Godzilla and uh, Kong Skull Island get... Uh, their get 4k releases because this is a thing of beauty this is a visually a very stunning film and uh i fully recommend it you know people may disagree with me but you know i you know it's, it's my take so um so yeah that's my uh kind of newbie's guide to dipping your toe into the godzilla franchise uh, look you know like i said i understand this is not an easy franchise to get into so hopefully these suggestions might help you become a bigger Godzilla fan uh, would love to know your comments on you know like what's your favorite Godzilla movie you know if you have any questions about Godzilla I'm not by far an expert but you know I am a huge fan and I really greatly love Godzilla and the whole franchise so uh, please feel free to ask me some questions I'll be more than happy to you know, answer them to the best of my ability. Also, uh, you know, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, also subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing here at D's Nerds. And uh, also, hey, um, you know, ring that bell icon so you know when those videos are coming out. And uh, don't forget, we're also on Facebook and Instagram, so you can follow us there for more content as well. So until next time, I am Chris and this is D's Nerds and you guys have a great, safe rest of the day. Bye.